viewers and welcome to a series of programmes brought to you courtesy of Newry and Warren District Council. Well, as most of you are probably aware by now, Newry and Warren District Council will cease to exist on the 31st of this month and from the 1st of April we'll be joining with our uh, counterparts in Down District Council in a new super council called Newry, Morn and Down. Well, in effect, uh, Newry and Morn District Council now has been in existence since 1973 and we really are coming to the end of an era. So uh, over the next few weeks, I'll be chatting to councillors from uh, the five electoral areas on the legacy uh, which we have left behind over those 40 years. And now last week, I was chatting to Newry City councillors. And today, I'm joined by uh, Crotleaf area councillors, Councillor Michael Carr and Councillor Declan McAteer. Gentlemen, you're very welcome. Hi, thank you, Hilary. <coughs> thank you for coming along to join us. Um, can I just first of all ask both of you, I'll start with you, uh, Michael, because I think you're the longest, the longer serving. Uh, when did you uh, stand for election and what prompted you and what has been your main areas of interest? Uh, well, I'm on council from June 2001, so just coming up for 14 years uh, in office. Uh, since that time, I've gone through two elections, uh, mm -hmm. three now going into the Super Council. Um, what prompted me to become a councillor was, uh, God rest him, the late uh, Paddy O'Hanlon, who uh, was a former uh, SDLP uh, MLA That's right, and, yeah. and mm -hmm. so on. Paddy was a, a great character and I used to meet him regularly for lunch and, uh, and give off to him as a politician. That he was doing, <laughs> not doing, doing his doing job. For one point. <laughs> All right. So uh, when when a vacancy, when uh, my predecessor Jim McCart retired, he came along and asked me what to put my name forward, and I said, "No way, Paddy." Uh, Jim would be a hard act to follow, <laughs> wouldn't he? <laughs> Absolutely, he, he was uh, just part of our whole history in one point. But uh, I suppose to cut a long story short, Paddy Paddy talked me into it. He says, "Michael, you can't come down here every day and give off to me." about nothing happening in more point if you're not prepared to do something about it. Absolutely. So uh, eventually uh, I, uh, I agreed to let my name go forward and uh, I suppose in, in my first campaign and things hadn't changed too much since, uh, I let it be known that I was going in as a, a 3P councillor. 3P? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, now what's that? That was for the uh, pool which was number one in the people's minds in more point. Mm -hmm. We needed a pool. Pool policing and planning were uh, my priorities at that time, and I have uh, spent a lot of time uh, trying to develop all three aspects of that. Good. Uh, so hopefully some of those will come to fruition. Well, I, I, I would say that we, uh, the people of Warren Point, are deeply disappointed that we haven't got a swimming pool as a seaside resort and a, and a main attraction in this part of the world uh, that we haven't been able to. Uh, get the swimming pool. We came very close and very two, close away. Two, yeah. 2000, 2002, <coughs> we took a notice of motion to council, which was again narrowly defe defeated, 14 votes to 11. I'll never forget it. And and the argument at that time was the new swimming pool that we we're getting ready to open in Newry should oh. have been located uh, in, in Warren Point, Point. Or close to Warren mm -hmm. Point. Uh, from the policing side of things, back in 2001. Um, they were introducing the uh, district policing partnerships. Uh, it was very contentious. Uh, not all parties were on board at that yes, time. Yeah. It came much later. Uh, and it was difficult to get it up and going. But uh, the results uh, and the performance of the DPPs, have which have excellent. now gone out of existence, uh -huh. e even over that period, um, but it has introduced community policing in, in across the district and uh, all parties are on board now and it has made a big difference. Excellent. Planning at that time was uh, the introduction of what's known as the Bambridge Newry Area Plan, uh -huh. or the Newry Bambridge Area Plan, which was to be produced in 1998 and didn't get uh, officially accepted to 2012, I think it was an absolute disaster, but we fed into that of where planning, uh, the shape of planning across the district, where you should build houses, uh -huh. where you should have your industry and so on. Very contentious, very uh, long drawn out. Uh, a lot of controversy over it, yeah. A lot yeah, of controversy, yeah. yeah. So, but some successes in it. Good. Uh, Declan, what prompted you? How long have you been in, in Newry and Moore and what prompted well, you to stand for election? Yeah. 
Well, I've, well, I stood elected first in 2011, and then last year, obviously, yes. again for the Super Council. Uh -huh. With my uh, involvement in politics, because we are back to, I think it was 84, 85, when uh, pre Eddie McGrady's uh, victory in South Down over Enoch Powell, <coughs> there was a big push on within the SDLP that time. And I'm trying to think back actually who recruited me, and I can't <laughs> quite remember, but I have a notion it may have been Megan's cousin, Hugh <laughs> Carr. Uh, oh, yes, and, uh, Yeah, I got involved at, at that stage actually before the election, and it was great at that stage, I suppose, to come in uh, on the on the tide of a wave in a sense that when we got, because it was such a big effort, we, put in, we actually won the seat that time, yes, I recall. Uh -huh. So that was my first engagement with, with politics. All he had a good interest in, you know, what was going on, and then I suppose having grown up and come home from school through Newry during the, the height of the Troubles, it probably did influence you and I suppose in what way you were going to be in life in terms of politics, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I very much would have gone down the road of uh, the sort of the coming out of the civil rights uh -huh. and the thing of non-violence, you know, and that was what my big attraction with the SDRP was, you uh -huh. know. So. You were always very interested in tourism, as I remember, <laughs> way, way back yeah, in the 80s. Yeah, uh, right. Yourself and Gerard O'Hare right. used to yeah, run, we run tours. coach tourism, we did all sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, Mourn Tours, the famous Mourn That's Tours. That's right. <laughs> I remember when we won the, uh, it was the British Tourism uh, New Business of the Year Award uh -huh. for innovation. And uh, Jerry, I would get, would get fun of that, actually. When you think back on it, I mean, you know, if people... Uh, if you try that now in the circumstances, I people know. say you're mad. I know, we had a, but it we worked quite, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We brought a lot of people, but especially in Dublin. And all well, the South I, I can remember them coming as far as Cork. That's right, there was some great, nice Great, great, well. uh, absolutely. Right. So, uh, my, my, my interest in tourism and Meg and I are very much on the same uh -huh. track as do Crot Leave Councillors. Yes. Really, uh -huh. really, uh, you know, really want to see tourism, because I think it'd be a big economic driver. You know? Well, that's what I was just going to say. We're here to talk about the legacy uh, uh, that we've left in, in Crotleave, and I suppose tourism has been the big economic yeah. driver. And I think it's all uh, part of that, or a lot of that is down to the acquisition of Kilbrony Park way back. And when, when did the council buy Kilbrony Park? That must have been a way back in the early 70s. I believe was it, it was 1976. Uh, 76. I remember, yeah, and I remember the stories back then. Uh, it was actually sold to a developer and the developer had permission to go in and build houses on it. Right. And the people in the Strawberry came out and blocked the uh, bulldozers the going plan. in. And yeah, uh, in particular, I think Sean Tinley, Tojo, better, better known as right. Tojo. <laughs> and uh, there are many stories behind <coughs> that. And uh, when, when the development was opposed so much, I think the council bought it over at that time. Probably for... A, a song, as they say. Yeah, I, I, what, sure. I, yeah. I can't remember the exact amount, but it really has been the jewel yeah. in the crown, hasn't yeah. it, of, of, of Newry and Mourne? Was it really uh, 30 or 80,000 bed? That's figured it knocked about because yeah. there's more, is it? Um, I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, yeah, and like you say, it's been the jewel in the crown oh, ever since. It has. Just for access to the mountain, for mountain walks, and uh, worked closely with the forestry, and then the development of the mountain bike trails yeah. say, has been a massive success. Yeah. But even even prior to the mountain bike trails, you know, it's been a mecca for sporting events, hasn't it? There's yeah. been the cross country, the schools. Oh yes, that's you've right. been down and at that deck, yes, haven't that's right. you? Yeah, uh -huh. and you know, I mean the tennis courts up in it, and just the beauty of the place, you know. And the fact is, you know, you go down there, you meet people you haven't seen for years, mm -hmm. anything you do go down. For it's a big open space where Aye, people, people can and walk and their you know, dogs. Yuri, so. people, you know, points paths, people are on map. It, everybody comes to it actually yeah, now from yeah. all parts of the, you know, of the country, really. It really is heralded as a, as a great success and a lovely place. And I suppose we're in the age at the moment is, is you know, is you know, how to you know, develop it sensibly without, you know, over developing over the, the cables. Yes, yes, you know, and that's, that's where we are at the moment. With the well, this new, the new Narnia trail now, that's just opened recently, hasn't it, yes, for, yes. for the kids? Have, have you yes. any been down There's at it? I'm oh, afraid yes, I haven't got that. Yeah, yeah. But I think I remember yeah. when I came into council, well, I'm not clear, mate, maybe did it all, but certainly I was very aware that C.S. Lewis used to come to Restrever. In fact, my own job with the Department of Agriculture, I uh, know the house that he used to come up in Nakbara, come and visit relatives there, I believe, in, uh -huh. Eugen, I think Colonel Eugen's house. But um, I was very aware that this, and there was a potential there, you know, to develop this particular theme because it was always said that he did, uh, you know, use images from his forever uh -huh. in, in, his, in, in the background of his books, you know. But so, and that's what tourism is about. It's, it's actually taking, taking the small things that the area has and its connections and, to and, and, and amplifying that yes, development exactly. and you know and that's, that's, that is the most the big challenge and that's the big strategy with us is to try and do that you know. Yeah. Well one of the big investments now that the council have put into it is the, the upgrading of the caravan park 
which now is like a, a four or five star caravan park and they're coming from, I believe, all over the UK to, to that. Yes, and we're trying to give that a lift at the moment with online booking and uh -huh. uh, receiving them in the evening and the, this whole new term, glamping, uh, we're hoping to be able to cater for uh, that facility. Uh, that sounds that well. sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's glamorous camping or, 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 or that, but yeah. uh, and and there's these small <coughs> pods that you can have now instead of uh, the uh, the tent itself and uh, making people much more comfortable and yeah. Uh, so the, the park has been a, a roaring success over the, over this past number of years, as has uh -huh. uh, the Ross Monument, which uh, in, in our time in council as well, we got... Yeah, no, that, that was a, a neglected site for, oh, for yes, years, was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. that's because it was privately owned, the owner was in America, the council tried to vest the site and had great difficulty for many, many years. Anthony Williamson was a big, uh, worked very hard in that project as well to get right, the ownership. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then when we got the ownership um, and some investment into it, cleaned it all up, put the lights on it, and, and it's spectacular really at times. Then the whole history has been recorded. There's been... Uh, we had the big 4th of July yeah. celebration down. Yeah. Was that down in oh, Rostrever, yes. just yeah. there? That's right, during the... John yeah. McAvitt yeah. is a big that's, that's advocate. Of yeah. course, yes. Yeah. And... Uh -huh. Uh, yes, and that's going from strength to strength mm -hmm. with the linkages uh, that have been created over in the United States. And I think there's going to be another big celebration next year, isn't there, as well in Ross Trevor? Yeah, that is the bicentennial. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, the, uh, this year's was in preparation for that. Mm. So, uh, Celebrate the yeah. Star Spangled Banner, actually, yeah. the, the historical island. Yes. Um, but the it's great to see, you know, it's good to see, you know, when, we, when the council actually invested money in doing that up itself, the, the monument up, it's good to see the local people then taking ownership of it and yes. then starting to fan out and you know take, take an interest historically in it and then build upon that and that is that's the real success of something and i think they've even got yes. the school children involved oh, they're, they're, they're sort of twinning with schools they, in know, baltimore yeah, somewhere aren't they yeah. yeah see it shows you how things can mushroom and grow mm -hmm. from these things you know yeah. so that's the that's the great influence council can have you know yeah, definitely. That, yeah. that certainly Some will be. Seeds, you know, and, they'll grow. and also, we've opened the new visitor centre in um, Kilbrony Park. Kilbrony, yes. yeah. Yeah. That's that's a huge facility now for small groups yeah. who want yeah. to meet and change. Yeah. Is there changing facilities in it or anything? No, I think it's more. It's more well, there is a, sh a shower. A shower or yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Thing. It's not yeah. for big groups coming yeah. to. Yes, to it's use just smaller facilities, but it is there for. A lot of schools access the park for uh, nature walks, uh -huh. uh, uh, rambling, uh, bird watching, getting involved in all uh -huh. the nature uh -huh. uh, education and uh, it's uh, many the time they come down it's a very wet day so now at least they can go in inside we have the technology to be able to show PowerPoint presentations, give presentations, uh -huh. give them food nice kitchen and so yeah I think it has been a good investment. Yeah. Yeah. And then it actually was good as council because yeah. you know we would yeah. actually have helped you know, we're actually on site with the architect designed it and uh -huh. we made you know, we made sure that we incorporated it into you know, the barbecue area as well. Yes. That so you know, even corporate groups or, or business groups people come down, families come down. And it just blends into the landscape, have, doesn't yeah. it really, really you well. We use that as well and, and that took that into it as well and made it, uh -huh. you know, safe and secure yeah. you know, and actually pleasing to look at. So, yeah. Again, uh, festivals have been a big player in, in mm. attracting tourism to, to the Crotleave area. I'm thinking particularly, we're staying with Kilbrony Park, the Kilbrony Vintage Show, which this year is celebrating 30 years, yes. can you believe? Yeah. Uh, I know you're both very involved with the, with right. the committee. Yeah, yeah. That's been a, a huge success, hasn't it? That's right, huge success. And um, when you think of the economic uh, yeah, impact it has. Yeah, but it's known now throughout the, uh, the island and certainly across Britain as well, you have people coming. Uh -huh. So it just shows you that it made that in, uh, international impact really. It you has, know? yes. And just, you know, loyally everybody comes every year to it from all over, all over Ireland anyhow, certainly. It's great to see that. And, and of course it, it's the charity's benefit from That's it, I think. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Last year, what was yeah. it, £18,000 they give to charity yeah. just from that one event? Yeah. yeah. When you think of you know that fanning out into groups, and we talked about an overall figure not so long ago. I forget the word. Was I think it's so near so. about a quarter of a million. Yes. Uh, yeah. And certainly yeah. fr now I'm only going from 1995 yeah. when the council took it over, mm. yeah. uh, because year on year we make mm. up to twenty thousand pounds. Lions Club have put an enormous mm. amount of work they into have, it. Yes. You know, and I don't like mentioning, but Paul Bream over his past number of years, he is a real driver behind. Oh, the, he definitely the is. Thing. And mm. uh, you know they should be commended and. Uh, 
it, it really is spectacular when you see all the vehicles out mm. there. But the amount of organisation, Hilary, and, and you put uh, yourself personally. Well, a lot it has. Of work it's into just it. been. It's been a great yeah. pleasure to yeah. do it. So but, definitely. Uh, and uh, and it should be acknowledged that uh, you know, abs like like Declan says, thousands of people over the, over the years have come. Yeah, well, yeah. It's a good show. A good day. Out. Brilliant day. Out. Yeah. And then, of course, with all the other festivals, we have the Maidens of the Morn, <coughs> going at least twenty five mm -hmm. years. Twenty five years last year, uh, Fiddler's Green is getting very close to that. Yeah. Blues in the Bay maybe was a wee bit, uh, a wee bit newer, but it has. But it's it's a brilliant oh, success as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's right. You're building on every year yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, these things are all great. You know, they're all good boosters. You know, and you know, think of it from the point of view, I suppose, of the local businesses, the bars, the restaurants. Yes. What's you know, if they can get a good boost, you know, a couple of times yeah. a year, certainly it helps pay their rates. I'm sure. <laughs> you know. Definitely. Uh, well, of course, sport is a, a big thing too in the Crotleaf area. Declan, you're quite involved with that, are you? Yeah, I, uh, to an extent, yes, involved with the GA in Bourne. And funny, I was just thinking there in, in terms of the legacy as well. Um, the council actually advocated that uh, the central and Northern Ireland government, way back in the 70s, they weren't apparently uh, given really any money, as they probably do today, to the sports council, uh, to any football clubs at all or anything, you know. So it was, um, thank you. Or the SDLP had actually proposed that we would ask the central government to come on board. I think Bourne Club, my own club in Bourne, were one of the first beneficiaries to that. I think it was 25,000, which is big money then. You can't come way back. Uh -huh. And uh, they then put their, their floodlights up and became the first uh, club in Ireland to have floodlights. And then out of that, then the, the, the precedent was set, and not all the other clubs then came. And that's how you see such a plethora of really good quality uh, sporting facilities through right throughout the whole of the, the Cotley area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Even and right out calls, to Mayo Bridge, uh, yes, Hilltown. And, and it covers, Some thankfully, ground. it covers all codes as well, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, when you take Nansans Park and that complex out there, you know, Sarker Gillick as well, going on. You know, so as, as clubs and areas started to develop, then they grasped that, you know, that help they got from... So Cotley. we have left a good legacy where sports Absolutely, concerns. Absolutely, yes. So it's growing. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. Yeah. And every, you know, it's that successful. Sport, and this, you couldn't get a better thing in a, in a, in a society, really, because it, it brings sort of everybody together. It preoccupies yeah. so many young people. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's a great investment. You mm -hmm. know, it really mm -hmm. is. And I think, you know, most of the club, the, the, there's a constant demand for more pitch area all the time. That's, that's very, very healthy. You look at it, you know, in long term. Yeah, that, definitely. That there's constantly a, a grasp for more land, for more pitches, for more areas to yeah. do that, and that's 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 a great uh, accolade, really. To and another great facility we have more in point of, of course, the golf club, of which yeah. I think you're the the captain this year. Yeah, am I, am just, I? just in there. Just in. Time. Good. Yeah. We'll give yeah. that a plug then. It's yeah. it's been a great facility over yeah. the years, hasn't it? Yeah. And then reference uh, facilities held by the council. They have an academy course down there, just on the Mound Road. Uh -huh. It's a great facility, and I remember uh, Councillor Pat McGinn opened it way back when he was mayor, and it truly is a good facility. Uh -huh. the, the big success story, and Warren Point reference, uh, council funding to sport, has got to be Warren Point Town Football Club. Absolutely, yes. Uh, they play on land owned by the council, and that turned out to be a benefit in the end, uh, in that the council was able uh, to put in some capital investment. And uh, to see uh, that club uh, come from where they were a few years ago. And they're doing uh, very well, first, right? of, first yeah, division. Yeah. Uh, Premium League, uh, I, I think, yeah. And we're really looking to them to try and stay up there and because and, there's a lot of benefits to come to the Warren Point area with visiting teams. And, and, and do the teams so actually play down in Warren Point? Oh, they do, They yes, do, yes. That's With a few problems to start off yes, with. Yes, uh-huh. The lights and paying the electricity bill and stuff like that. <laughs> But, but the they're meter. getting there and they're improving on the field, so we look forward to more success. Good, good. As well. well, coming back to, to Warren Point then, uh, there's a lot uh, oh. happening in Warren Point which we're going to leave as a legacy. You know, the upgrading of the park. What, what stage is that at now? Yes, uh, the, the park got a, a potential of a, a quite a large grant of over a million pounds. We, we did invest in the park just before its centenary back in 2007. Uh -huh. uh, and we spent um, a few thousand cleaning the whole place, but it was really only a sticky patch, and we knew that. And some of the community then got involved, and they're making uh, applications for funding to the lottery fund, and were very successful. Uh, we put a person in place, uh, Shirley Keenan, uh, 
Yes. And she's building up the plan, <coughs> which will be submitted. So we look forward to, we're all feeding into the process at the moment of mm -hmm. what it should li look like, how should the money be spent, and so on. But uh, it's, it speaks good for the uh, for the municipal part of Board of Good. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're very proud of the party. Well, that will be another jewel mm -hmm. in the crown because what is this, it's yes. 100 years old yes, or something, yes, yeah. over 100 years. Yes, 100 and it really does need a bit of a facelift, doesn't yeah. it, at this stage? Um, but funny, Hilary, don't forget that, um, you know, when we were talking to the people from the Heritage Lottery Fund, you know, they were explaining that, you know, it, the town really is an Edwardian town and there's not very, very many like it in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And they're very keen, you know, as, as we've discussed, they're very keen to develop this now. And the next stage, you know, Will be hopefully you know the the baths the water point baths yes and restore them to some or at least some of this former splendor you know and you can see how that you know will eventually build up into a really really good tourist product because mm -hmm. people actually do go on architectural uh, holidays of tours, course that type yes of thing, uh -huh. come to see this type of restoration uh -huh, uh -huh. work done and I think again you know if we can keep going down that road as I, as I said earlier on you know building the, the what we have try and build your product around that. That's right. And, you know, one point for a while there, people thought that the baths were going to literally fall into the sea. In fact, some people were even advocate that you let that <laughs> happen. Would. Yes, and, you know, uh, when you have that little package there, you know, the baths, the park, you know, and the type of housing in the area. And then on down into Rostrever yes, and the, right. the, the, know, the park have, and the mountain yeah, bike yeah. trails. It really is a, a good mm, tourism product yeah. that you could spend a good weekend. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. And then there's been a few jobs done via infrastructure project, environmental improvement that's scheme right, yes. in Queen Street, mm. Duck Street, uh, around the Marine Parade, you know, out in front of mm -hmm. uh, the Lock and Key there. That area has all been done up. And we're well. waiting for uh, just final approval for Church Street and the Square to be t all tidied up and lifted up as, as well. Mm. So it's very important that uh, these projects c get completed. Well, I mean, hopefully uh, Warren Point will, will once again attract the numbers that they used to, like 50, 60 yeah. years ago, yeah. when maybe even longer than that. When yeah. people, people, people don't, when you say that, people don't really accept it unless they're you know, my first job at uh, at a very young age was working on the Meath boats. At that time, we had I remember eighteen those myself, boats in the, yes. in, in, the, in the dock, and and there was a group came the Gaston tours, and it came every Thursday, and there could have been six or eight bus loads coming in, going over to Meath, mm -hmm. back to the Osborne for their tea, you know, and yeah, I agree. With you. That's the sort of situation that flow of people that we need to try and recreate. And then, of course, you used to have the boat down to Carlingford as well. Yes. I, Yes. I remember mm. that. Well, yeah, yes. Going to Carlingford. Yes, yes. That was the maid of morn. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's Fantastic. Yeah, we have the bigger book coming in now with the, yeah. the, you know, the first cruise ship. Absolutely. And I that's, think that's, that's going that's, to. That's a great legacy. And mm -hmm. now we have another one announced, as you right. know, uh, coming now next year. And again, that's a great legacy to leave behind that. There's a tradition now of, mm -hmm. of serious tourism from Edward Warren Point. And you know, as, as that happens, you know, I, you know, it'd be great to see the community responding and the business community, in fact, having the confidence to respond to that. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd all love to see, you know, a, 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 nice, a, a hotel nice hotel or something. Yeah. And yeah. maybe providing in some form or that swim pool, Megan, that <laughs> yes. has eluded us for a while, you know. <laughs> but I mean, that's the, way it, that's the way that these things probably, maybe hopefully do. Well, you um, have to take them in stages, do, don't you? Yeah, you just have you to. Know, as I said, we, we're only coming out of the, 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 you know, at the end of the day, the reality is going to have the troubles where we mm -hmm. have. A lot of hotels. How many hotels are there? Are six, six hotels destroyed during the troubles. Yes. Sadly, yeah. blown up, bombed, mm -hmm. burned. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's very hard to to build that up. You can't do it in, in, a, in a small. You know, you have years. to give the, the people confidence yeah, that it's, it's going to, take going a while to work. To do that and mm -hmm. build your infrastructure and then that will come. Yeah. Hopefully, you know. So. So you're yeah. both happy then with the legacy that that no, you no, have no, left with. <laughs> Crotley. A couple of other areas where where we did. Rather well was uh, the schemes that are going on Ring McElroy Park, mm -hmm. and there's further developments going in there, and what's happening at uh, Clan Allen Park uh, for walking because, and it relates back to maybe one of the first points we were talking about, the whole planning thing. Uh, there's not much green space about now for people to go and access, so it's very important mm -hmm. that we that we try and hold on to those, and and people will walk around the town, and and it's it's important that they have various places that they can go into mm -hmm. uh, from a safety point of view and so on. Yeah, definitely. So some good things have been done. We, we haven't got that big master 
project developed that we would have loved to. But of course, you're both going uh, forward into into the new council. So, mm -hmm. what are your plans to promote uh, your area? Yeah. How do you think you'll be able to do that? Um, you're, we're in a bigger council mm -hmm. now. Obviously, there's going to be more demands put on on the money, and it's going to go, have to go mm -hmm. further. Well, I, I I do think you know, looking at it and what I've seen already, it's quite. I think it's quite. Uh, in, in I suppose comfort in the sense that it's, I know it is a bigger, bigger organisation, but sometimes that's good because there's a strong possibility that if you argue your corner for the particular area that you come from, mm -hmm. and I think Michael and I come from an extremely good area that could, is worthy of development, you know, I'm not just talking about one point, but back into the hinterlands as well. Exactly. You know, you're yes. talking about uh -huh. walking tours, I mean, but I'm, the I'm convinced, and yes, I'm convinced that, that we will be able to put uh, forward our area as one of the mega areas that we would be concentrating our efforts on. And mm -hmm. that's where and I think that new council now has the it has the strength behind it and it has the imprimatur at the end of the day in, in size and in dominance in, in the whole of Northern Ireland to command you know, a bit of respect maybe. and a great coastline, yes. you know, for and, tourism. And we certainly aim, you know, that, that it just won't be the, the Belfast and the North Antwerp coast. We are determined as a as a collective group of councillors really to put our area you know as as one of the, the the premium premier areas to come in Northern Ireland and that is one of the main aims of this and I have no doubt that we will uh, certainly um, in my own lifetime as a person as, as a local representative I would love to see that totally developed uh, in its fullest that we would be up there battling with the top and uh, I have every confidence that would we that will happen you know I really am convinced of it but but you have to be convinced. If you want to make <laughs> You've it been happen. elected. Yeah, well, that's the, you know, but it you have to deliver. That, you know, you know, uh, Michael, what, so do, what, do you, what do you hope for uh, your? We're going into a super council. I'm not sure that we're super councillors. <laughs> <but, coughs> I. There's two views going in here. We have one group of people that are very optimistic and see all the opportunities through community planning and 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 the whole planning facility being handed over to council mm -hmm. and the opportunities uh, via being just being in a bigger a bigger setup and uh, I'm, I'm not so sure I, I think that I always felt that uh, number one some mistakes were, were made under the review of public administration I think uh, probably 11 councils is too, too few a number mm -hmm. Had it been 15, for example, in Newry and Mourne, it wouldn't have changed. And I think the size that Newry and Mourne is at the moment is probably Just a good enough. size, yeah. And I have difficulty in relating the people in Cross Midland relating to the people up in mm. Killalay and so on, and, and everybody in Different, play. big challenges. Yeah, Cultures, so I have concerns. Yeah, maybe yeah. like that can say, it's, it's just big challenges. Yes, definitely. That are out there. We've, mm. we've got to go for the opportunities that have made a rise, and we've got to, we've got to try and... Uh, lead uh, in, into this from, from our own points of view, Point but, it's, but it's very, very difficult. It's too mm -hmm. disjointed, you know, we will only be sitting on two out of four committees and, and so on. Mm -hmm. so, I uh, know. Uh, so I have to say that uh, those, those concern me, but there are a lot of people out there very optimistic about how, how this will go uh, and involve in the community. It will look different. And maybe that's maybe that's what's scaring me a bit. <laughs> There's a difference that it looks. However, uh, I, I just want to wish you all the best. Uh, I think we've come to the end of our of our airtime. Um, I think you've done a great job over the last forty years for Crotleave area, and I hope that's you're going to continue to do that uh, when you go into the new super council. So thank you very much uh, for taking time to chat with me this afternoon. Thanks, Hilary. Thank you, Hilary. Um, Very enjoyable. Good. So, viewers, thank you for joining us as well. And next week, I'll be back uh, chatting to the Fuse Council councillors about uh, the legacy of the last 40 years. Do join us again. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.